College admissions have become a huge part of today's culture, especially for teens. Welcome, my fellow youths. Um, I'm also a teen. I'm a year away from not being a teen, which causes me existential dread, but that's not relevant to today's topic. Today, I'm here to tell you about how a lot of what you might hear in the media or in everyday conversations is completely untrue. Maybe your parents just have outdated advice, or perhaps some people you know have far too optimistic of a view about American meritocracy. Regardless of where these myths come from, they're myths and I'm here to debunk them for you. I'm sure you already know this by the title of the video, but this is not going to be one of those toxic positivity videos. You might think I'm overly pessimistic or cynical about the world, but I think I have plenty of reason to believe that this mystical world of elite colleges and elite college admissions is not as sunshine rainbows and perfect academics as they market themselves to be. I'm a current student at a pretty prestigious American university. I go to UCLA, if you can tell from my posters, and I have friends and contacts spanning across pretty much the entire spectrum of top 5, 10, 20, 50, etc. schools. Like name any school in that top 20 range of prestige. I probably have a friend who goes there, so it's all based on personal experience from the inside. So let's get to it. The first myth I want to address is the cliche advice of be yourself. Don't. This advice applies in a lot of areas of life, but it doesn't really apply to college applications. Mostly because the purpose of college admissions is to present yourself as the perfect applicant or the perfect candidate or the perfect student. And the thing is, if you be yourself, no one is really a perfect applicant because hopefully none of us base our entire lives around what looks best on college applications. What I mean by don't be yourself though is not that you should strip every aspect of your personality and unique voice out of your application, just that you should be real and raw and honest in the way that an internet social media influencer is real and raw and honest. Social media influencers are imperfect and relatable in ways that are still perfect. Like, let's be real. I know this, we all know this. No matter how real and raw we pretend to be, there is a certain aspect of pretending and only putting your best imperfect but still perfect foot forward on the internet. In any space where you are applying for something, whether it be to be admitted to college or to be selected for a job, you have to present yourself in the perfect but still having a personality but perfectly imperfect way in order to get picked. It's almost an impossible balance to strike, which is why I'm having so much trouble putting it into words. And the thing is, nobody is perfect like that. That's why you can't be your full authentic self. You have to curate yourself so that you are perfect in a slightly interesting imperfect way. Our next myth is that there is an if and only if relation between working hard enough and getting into a good school. To make a short statement longer and make more sense, what I'm trying to say is it's not true that if you've worked hard, it's inevitable that you'll get into a good school, and that if someone has gotten into a good school, it doesn't necessarily mean that they actually worked all that hard. I do think the second statement is a bit more true. Like if you have to force a causal arrow, most people who get into elite schools or just good schools in general have worked very hard and deserve their spot there. There are some exceptions a la Operation Varsity Blues and rich people bribing their way into whatever they want. But like, I'm guessing most viewers of this video are not one of those cases. If you are though, um, can you buy me a house in LA so I can not pay for rent in Westwood? Um, that aside though, the first statement I think is completely untrue. If you work hard, you're a good student, all that stuff, it doesn't necessarily automatically cause you to get into a good school. That's just the unfortunate reality of how incredibly competitive college admissions are these days. Economically, I guess, the demand for elite colleges has only grown over time as more people are going to college and more people are desiring these high prestige schools. But the number of spots, the supply, has largely stayed the same. I mean, you can only have 20 schools in the top 20, and most of these schools can't really grow their undergrad population by that much due to space limitations. Basically, admission teams are getting swamped with far more qualified applicants than they can reasonably accept. Therefore, they have to make pretty arbitrarily small distinctions between applicants in order to at least force some people to get eliminated. Several admissions reps from schools like, I don't know, Harvard or something, I can't remember the exact name off the top of my head, but people have said that they could admit essentially another random third of the applicant pool and still have an equally qualified incoming class. 
And that does seem a little far-fetched. Maybe some of you still believe that college admissions reps have a perfect formula to eventually divine out the absolute most qualified people and the plebs who didn't actually deserve it. But the thing is, once you talk to people who get in or apply but don't get in, you start to see that the level of qualification is pretty arbitrary. The line doesn't seem to be clear in any way. Of course, you have to have worked hard enough and been a good enough student to meet the bare minimum requirements. But then from there on up, it's kind of luck. Like it matters if you get a reader who resonates with your life story or one who doesn't think YouTube is a real valid hobby. Maybe you get someone who played violin with their grandma as a kid and they love your story about violin. Or maybe they think cheerleading isn't a real sport so they don't care at all about your cheerleading story. Unless someone has like a Grammy or a Nobel Prize or some other factor that's clearly a cut above the rest of the 18 year olds in the pool, it's all pretty much lottery ticket for everyone else. Some of my friends who are smarter and more interesting and just generally better people than me, in my opinion, did not get into the same sparkly name schools that I got into. Conversely, some people I knew who attend UCLA or some other elite institutions are not that great. Some people are still mean or they cheated their way through high school or they just overall aren't very good students or people. And the reason I want to make this point so clear is that there is often the sense of superiority and inferiority when hearing about who gets in where. So if you don't get in somewhere, don't take it personally and don't judge people super harshly based on where they do or don't get in because it's not really a fair value judgment. Okay, I kind of spent a long time on that one, but we're gonna power through the next five at a brisker pace. And the next myth we're going to discuss is that personal qualities are what's really important. As you move up that pecking order of college eliteness, a lot of schools will start to claim that they can do a holistic review to evaluate all of your personal qualities. And that is logistically impossible. First of all, in most cases, being a great person or having a fantastic personality or a great life story is not going to cancel out any academic or lack of resume blemishes. Like yeah, someone who has a fantastic story and a 3.7 GPA might overrule someone who's a little bit closer to average but has a 3.8. But if you have like a 2.7 and less than 800 on your SAT, no matter how good your story is, you're probably not gonna get into Harvard. Furthermore, this whole pretense that admissions readers can identify your deepest down personal traits from looking through a stack of papers doesn't make any sense. For example, at my school at UCLA, I think they spend around five minutes on each admission file because it's the most applied to school in the country. The readers really don't have enough time to be like getting to know everyone. And even if they spend a longer time, like 20 minutes to an hour on each paper, which again, at elite schools is completely unrealistic because there are so many applicants, they really can't get to know anything beyond first impressions. Like if you've talked to a person for 20 minutes to an hour, you still barely know them, right? And they're not even talking to you. They're reading your grades and SAT scores and a couple of essays from a stack of paper. I don't doubt that evaluating personal qualities in this way can be beneficial to a university, but individual applicants should not be using these yes or no decisions as some sort of indicator of their personal qualities. Because no matter how much a college admissions officer looks at your resume, they don't know who you are. They don't know your personality. Also, this whole personal qualities thing was originally invented for discriminatory purposes. It was created because Jewish people were getting too good at academics and elite college admissions readers wanted to make sure that only the right type read white Anglo-Saxon Protestants could get into their schools. So uh, historical context doesn't define modern usage, but take from that what you will. Our next myth is that you should polish your essays to perfection. I don't mean that you should write them all like five minutes before they're due and like never spell check. I just mean that you shouldn't try to make them too perfect. First of all, don't get too many people to read your essay and revise it because especially if they're people who don't know you that well, it can start to strip away a lot of your personal voice. It's not your mom or your English teacher or your soccer coach applying to college, it's you. Additionally, you also don't want it to sound too polished and perfect, almost like an academic paper or anything, because you want it to still sound authentic. Going back to that first myth I discussed, like we know none of this authenticity is really as authentic as we want people to believe it is, but you've still got to play into the pretense. You've still got to market yourself as perfect but authentic. 
College admissions is a weird broken game, but we still gotta play it to the best of our abilities, all right? Especially my uh, fellow first gen Americans, we gotta get that stamp of elite approval on us. One tip I have to combat over polishing it is to read it out loud. That way you can identify whether it still feels and sounds like your natural voice in the way you'd naturally talk. I think this next belief is no longer as common in college going culture areas, but just in case your like high school counselor hasn't caught up with the times, it is a myth that you should be well-rounded in order to get into some of the most prestigious schools. Of course, if you're not necessarily aiming for like a top 20 or above school, it's completely fine to be well-rounded and just have good enough grades. But, but for those who are aiming for more prestige, it's generally now considered less desirable to be okay at a large number of things. Instead, it's preferred to be incredible at maybe one or two things. For example, being a regular member of 10 clubs is not as like impressive as being a state champion at something or other. The specialized area that you're great at is now called a spike in college admissions talk. So if you want to search that up, there is a keyword you can use. I think the only thing outside of this spike that is still essential is to maintain high grades and test scores in difficult classes. That's one of those like bare minimum requirements. Of course, just because colleges want you to focus on one thing to be spectacular at doesn't mean you should actually base your teenage years around it. You don't have to limit your entire life trajectory and focus on only one thing and ignore everything else that might interest you just so it looks better on a college application. In fact, I strongly encourage you to spend your entire teenage years just exploring everything you want to do because you only have one life. You have one chance to be a kid and a teenager and a young adult. And I don't think it's worth spending it on trying to get into a school when that outcome is not even guaranteed. It's better spent doing things you like and hopefully being good at one of them. Our last myth is that people who worked hard in high school just to go to the same state school as everyone else just wasted their time. This mindset probably isn't so common among the viewers of my channel because why would you be watching study advice videos if you weren't an academic tryhard? But some people do still believe that like, oh, look at all these tryhards who worked so hard in high school. Oh, imagine working hard in high school. They wasted all their time because they're going to the same school as a person who just slacked off. But the thing is people who were top students in high school who eventually go to a less prestigious middle ranked type of school are a lot better set up for success at that school. People who did well in high school are set up for better scholarship opportunities. They have more background knowledge to succeed in college classes. They have more items on their resume to apply to jobs or research positions or anything else that's going on at the university. Spending time on improving yourself, whether it be academically or otherwise, is never really a waste of time, even if it doesn't necessarily result in an immediate tangible outcome like admission to an elite university. Gaining these skills and experiences and just improving yourself, becoming the best version of yourself is never going to be a waste of your time, especially if you enjoy yourself along the way. So yeah, don't let the haters get you down. I know college admission season can be rough. Congrats to those of you who just survived it and are going off to college sometime later. And good luck to those of you who are getting started this summer. It's not the funnest of times, but you guys got this, you'll get through it. I hope you found this video helpful or interesting. And if you'd like to see more, I post new videos about student life on this channel every week and you can visit my Instagram, my TikTok, and my second channel for some other somewhat study-related content. See you next time.